God bless you, dear ones. Thanks a lot for tuning in. And good strength to all of you as you celebrate the great feast of the transfiguration of our Savior. What you're about to watch is a clip from one of our recent global catechism Zooms, and it addresses a very important question, which is the concept of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit or the unforgivable sin. I hope you enjoy it. We're going to go to our viewers here now. We have some questions. We'd like to invite Vincent. Vincent, we're going to unmute your microphone if you would like to ask your questions. There you are, Vincent. Hi, Father Josiah. Nice to see you again, brother. Nice to see you too. <laughs> hey, I have a question for you, and this comes up from time to time. And there's sometimes I've heard different explanations on this. Basically, the Holy Spirit, could you explain blaspheming the Holy Spirit? As Jesus you know, mentioned that it was the only unforgivable sin. Is this refusing his conviction of salvation? That's how it was kind of explained to me, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yes, uh, remember the context in which our Savior taught about the unique sin that is so frightening called the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, for which our Lord says this is the only sin in which there is no forgiveness. The context was Jesus performing incredible miracles by the power of the Spirit of God, casting out devils out of people, saving their lives, freeing them from bondage and bringing them to freedom. And in that context, his opponents not only did not honor him, they didn't stand in awe and praise God for his love for man and freeing people from the demonic. Instead, they accused Jesus, instead of praising him, and accused him of working with the devils, and in fact, being the chief of devils, casting out Satan out of people because of being uh, a servant of Beelzebub. So that is uh, the worst of calling good evil that is possible and was an expression of the most hideous form of unbelief uh, leading them to literally spiritual insanity, the Jewish leaders who were suggesting this thing. Sensitive souls wonder if there is a sin that isn't capable of being forgiven maybe i've committed it of course humble people think that way because they want to make sure that if they haven't committed it they find out what it is and they don't commit it so i i, I honor people who are worried about that but it's not resisting conviction we resist conviction constantly if all of us uh, were pure in heart and received the conviction of the lord as we should if we responded just this day, let's just take this day as an example. If all of us on this call uh, accepted the conviction of the Holy Spirit as we should today, then every one of you would have tears pouring out of your eyes right now. Your heart would be broken and you would be blessed because you would be living as a Christian and to live as a Christian is to mourn, right? Our Savior said this, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. The uh, so it's the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit does not mean that you resist his conviction. We all do that to different degrees. To resist it 100 percent and in fact, to demonize the Holy One, to demonize the Holy Spirit or Christ is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And the reason it's not forgiven is because when you reject the Holy Spirit like that, you don't repent. God forgives everyone who repents, but there's no forgiveness to the person who refuses to repent. If we hide from God, God wants to forgive us all. God wants to heal us all, but he can't do that if we hide. If we hide from him and refuse to look at him and, in fact, demonize his presence in our life, then, in fact, we will find ourselves incapable of being forgiven because we won't be able to ask. So, the, in practice, the blasphemy of against the Holy Spirit takes place uh, whenever we find ourselves in a position in which we will refuse to repent, which is why if you read the last book of the scriptures, the apocalypse, there is a refrain that is repeated over and over again. It's really the 
exp the expression, the apocalyptic expression of Jesus's word about the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, because despite all of the, the things that have taken place, all of the miracles of God's saving actions in the apocalypse, there was a contingency of people who were refused entrance into the kingdom of God, into the New Jerusalem, because, quote, they refused to repent. It's repeated over and over and over again. So ultimately, the, the, the judgment that comes upon the, those who blaspheme the Holy Spirit, the lack of forgiveness comes to the, all those who refuse to repent, because if you refuse to repent, you won't be forgiven. Patristic Nectar Publications is pleased to present a new six-part lecture series by Father Josiah Trenum entitled Demonology, Understanding and Winning the Spiritual Battle. The study of the Church's demonology is a part of basic catechism and Christian instruction. The scriptures are replete with teaching on the dark powers. Additionally, it is impossible to appreciate the magnitude of the saving deeds of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, without understanding how He, and He alone, has conquered Satan and destroyed His works. Lastly, Christians are called to fight and win in the spiritual war, and for this reason it is essential that believers understand their enemies and their tactics. Toward this end, Father Josiah presents in these lectures in-depth studies of the scriptures, divine services, and pedagogy of great saints and teachers on the subject of Satan and spiritual battle. For these and other available titles, please visit our website at patristicnectar.org.